Hello and welcome to the eighth insight in the Baselight Beginner video series. Today we're going to start to look at Baselight's color management system called True Light Color Spaces. And we're really going to delve into the three key terms that you need to understand when you open up Baselight, which is input color space, working color space, and cursor slash output color space. These three color spaces are very different things, so it's really good to have a really clear understanding of what they are and how to use them correctly uh, while we're preparing a scene to grade. If we set any of these three color spaces incorrectly, it can completely throw out our grade. Um, so when we're preparing the scene, it's really important that we get these three things right. But let's go back a second and talk about Baselight's color management framework. So Baselight's color system is called True Light Color Spaces. And without going into the theory too much, uh, you can think of it as just a really clever way of translating between color spaces. As you guys probably know, footage travels through quite a few different color spaces uh, from on set uh, through digital intermediate, and then finally to uh, its publishing platform, whether that be cinema, television broadcast, or online. So there needs to be a system, a way to translate between these color spaces um, as it suits us uh, in order to render out those deliverables uh, in the required formats. In the past, especially when I was learning to grade, um, I would use LUTs or lookup tables uh, to convert between color spaces. As a little refresher, a lookup table or a LUT is a fixed mathematical conversion that maps input RGB values onto corresponding output RGB values. It's not perfect, it's great, uh, but its um, interpolation can lead to um, inconsistencies, artifacts in your image. Baselight system is a little bit better than a LUT, um, so it uses precise formulas to convert between these color spaces. So it has an exact RGB output value for every input value. So there's no inaccuracies or artifacts. Um, it translates between the color spaces very, very nicely. But what does this look like as a user operating baseline. So we touched on this before. As a beginner, there are really three areas of color management where you need to understand the terms and be able to set them up correctly. They are the working color space, the input color space, and the cursor slash output color space. Let's dig into it now. As you can see, I have a scene already open. This is a duplicate scene from our previous insight. But to simulate a real world situation, uh, let's go ahead and close the scene. We're gonna open up the job manager with control J. We're gonna go up to the cog and we're gonna click new scene. So I'm just gonna call this uh, color space test. And let's have a little chat about what the working color space is. So when you click the drop down menu, you get a choice of some scene referred color spaces and some display referred color spaces. The way you should think of the working color space is that it describes the color space in which all of your grading operations will take place in. So if you have a few shots on your scene timeline and you haven't applied any grades, if you change the working color space, this won't affect your ungraded shots, but it will change how the grading tools react when you start adding your grade layers and when you start to play around. So the next question is, should I pick a scene referred or a display referred color space? I've got one simple piece of advice. Don't pick a display referred color space. This is the space in which your grading tools operate within and scene referred color spaces are by and large a lot larger than display referred color spaces. So you don't want to be restricting your grading tools in a smaller display referred space. So you should definitely pick a scene referred option here. The two scene referred color spaces that I would pick for most of my projects uh, would either be this ASUS CCT AP1 color space, because I personally prefer grading in ASUS. Alternatively, I could pick the film light T log slash E gamut, which is sort of film lights default uh, scene referred space. Um, but again, uh, nice and simple, uh, avoid display referred color spaces when setting your working color space and um, pick a scene referred color space uh, that you or the colorist prefers. That's all we'll go into at this point. Let's go open up our previous scene and see how we can change our working color space once we've created our scene. So I'm going to go ahead and click our color management scene, command middle mouse button drag to the right so we can see our timeline. And let's go up to our scene settings to see where we can change our working color space. So if we go to our format and color tab, down in the color sub panel, you can see that we have our working color space set here. You can also change your DRT or display rendering transform in this sub panel. Um, I won't go into this too much here. We briefly covered the DRT in part four of the series, setting up your first scene. My piece of advice here is uh, apply some grades to your shots, um, have a play with some of these DRT options and see which one you prefer. But just know, especially if you're setting up a scene for a colorist, this is where you can change your DRT in the format and color tab. Okay, so that's the working color space. 
The next thing that we should cover, as you can see, we've got a few shots here that we've already imported. Let's have a look at the input color space. So the input color space can be found up the top left in the parameters view. I'm just going to minimize this. If we have a look at the color space subpanel, you can see that we've got our input color space here. So all three of these color spaces that we're talking about are really important. Um, but this is one where you'll be able to see a lot of visual difference immediately. Um, so if I go ahead and click uh, this input color space and start changing it to other color spaces, you'll notice that the image is directly reacting to the decisions I make here in quite a dramatic fashion. So as you can see, very important that we get this set right. Luckily, the input color space is nice and simple. You just need to set the input color space to the color space that your camera shot in. So for example, if this camera operator had shot this movie in S-Log3, we would go ahead and toggle that to S-Log3. As you can see, this is looking quite contrasty and overly saturated. So that points to the fact that we're working with uh, red camera proxies. So the correct metadata setting for this project is actually Rec 709. Normally we'd never be grading with proxies, so we would actually be messing around with some of the red color spaces. But again, for this training series, we're just working with uh, QuickTimes. Um, so we'll select Rec 709 here. So really simple. Uh, your input color space needs to be set to the same color space as what your camera shot in. And this can change shot to shot throughout your scene. Okay, so moving on to the last color space that we need to understand as a beginner base light guru, and that is the cursor slash output color space. Now the cursor output color space is very often just called the viewing color space. And if we go down to the left hand corner of our display here to the cursors view, make that a bit bigger, you can see that we have a viewing color space here, which is currently set to 2.2 gamma P3D65. Your viewing color space should be set to your display output. So for example, I'm currently working on an iMac, which is a 2.2 gamma display with a P3 color gamut. So this is the correct setting for me. Now normally when you're working in Baselight in a facility, uh, your image display will not be on the same monitor as your GUI. So normally it'll be on a dedicated reference monitor. So for example, say I had my image on a dedicated reference monitor and I was uh, grading for broadcast television, I would need to change this viewing color space from this Apple color space to a broadcast color space. So 2.4 gamma and Rec 709. I'm gonna go ahead and change that here. And you can see it has a direct impact on my image. So again, very important that we get this set correctly because if we've set a viewing color space that's not the color space of our display, we're gonna be grading wrong because Baselight thinks the color space of our display is different to what it is. So again, because I'm working on a Mac, I'm gonna set it to the Mac gamma and color space, but this will change depending on the display that I'm outputting my image on. So for now, I'm gonna leave it set at 2.2 gamma P3. Okay, so that's an introductory look at color management within Baselight. So just to recap, uh, we've got three major color space settings that we need to be aware of. The first is working color space, which can be changed at the format and color tab. And this sets the color space that our grading tools will operate in. If you're an assistant preparing your scene for a colorist, make sure to check what DRT and working color space they prefer for any given project. Secondly, when you start to import footage into your scene, you'll need to make sure that your footage has been correctly tagged with the correct color space. So this can change shot per shot. In our example, uh, we're working with proxies. So we've made sure to set all of our footage uh, to Rec 709 because that's the correct color space that they are. Again, if you do ever want to expand this list of color spaces, uh, hold down the shift key and you'll see a whole wide range of possible color spaces. So hold down the shift key uh, to get this extended list of options. And finally, the cursor slash output slash viewing color space, which can be set down in the cursor view. This should match your display output. In my case, that is a 2.2 gamma P3 Mac display. If any of these color spaces are set incorrectly at the start of the process, you might really dig yourself into a hole, especially if you start to grade and you're actually not grading the image that you think you are. So it's really important to get these three things set right and yeah, you should be good as gold. As always guys, thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, flick them in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next insight. Cheers.